RC cars are meant to be driven and enjoyed, and over time, they all wear out. But are you making it worse? How quickly an RC car wears out depends on how much care you put into them, or don't. That's why today, we're going to discuss the seven ways people prematurely destroy their RC cars, and the ways to stop it. We all love driving RC, but there is one place that you should never drive it. That is underwater. Now this may surprise some people because most ready to run vehicles available right now are advertised as being waterproof in some way. But being waterproof is not the same as being submersible underwater. Now when an RC car is advertised as being waterproof, splash proof, or something along those lines, it's usually a reference to the electronics, the motor, the servo, or the speed controller. And the manufacturer is letting you know if you happen to get those expensive electronics a little wet, they won't die and they'll be okay. But if you're gonna submerse your RC car or drive it in deep water, well then that's a great way to permanently destroy those electronics. Now the electronics aren't the only items at risk of failure. All the metal parts in your car, like the screws, the hinge pins, the axles, the drive shafts, the transmission parts, and those oil lubricated bearings are at risk of corrosion, rust, and complete failure over time, if not properly dealt with afterwards. Even your tires are at risk of failure in water because water will get inside the tire through the vent holes, it'll get your foam inserts wet, which will then stay wet, turn moldy, eventually break down, and destroy a perfectly good set of tires. You can remedy this by just covering up the vent holes in the wheels with some tape to prevent the water from getting inside, and then when you're done, peel that tape off. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe for more RC. Now to continue with this flow, the next way people are destroying their RC cars is by not properly cleaning and drying them after they do get them wet or muddy. Now we know we shouldn't submerge our RC car in water, but if it's waterproof, it can get a little wet, right? You bet it can. You can go out and drive it in a, some light rain, drive it through some shallow puddles. It's okay to get a car that's waterproof a little wet. But it's okay only if you clean and dry the car afterwards. And if you don't and you just store away a wet, dirty, nasty RC car until you're gonna play with it again, well then that is certainly destroying the car. But this is an easy fix. Now like we already mentioned, the first thing you should do before you drive in water is put tape over those vent holes in your wheels to keep the water out. Now when you're done driving in water, take the tires off your car, you can peel the tape off the vent holes and put the tires somewhere where they can air out basically and dry all that moisture out from inside. Then use a towel, a can of compressed air, an air compressor, and dry off your vehicle as best as you can. You want all moisture gone. You can use a little rag or a Q-tip in some of the tighter to reach spots. But do whatever you can to get your vehicle completely dry to avoid any corrosion and rust on metal parts. It's also really important to inspect some of your ball bearings after you get your vehicle wet. Some of those ball bearings may need to be clean because they've gotten gritty. Maybe they just need to be re-lubricated with some bearing specific oil. Whatever the case, it's just good to check them. And also, there are two bearings in your motor that are easy to forget, but those also need to be lubricated. The next way people commonly destroy their RC car is usually in the pursuit of more speed, and it's by overgearing the vehicle. Now, with electric motors, since they're a single speed, there's a fine balance between the bottom end torque to accelerate from a dead stop and the maximum top RPMs for your top speed. And the electric motor has to cover that whole range. So as soon as you start messing with your gearing and you get this balance off a little bit, it's gonna add a lot of stress and strain to your motor, to your speed controller, and it's gonna cause excessive heat and potentially destroy those items. Most motors have a temperature rating up to 160 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're hitting 170, boy, you better not go any beyond that. You can add fans to your system, you can add a heat sink to your system, or you can just try gearing back down to where it was. Whatever you have to do to keep your temperatures in the safe zone. The other really common way that people are over gearing their vehicles and they're not even realizing it is by adding larger diameter tires to their vehicle. Essentially, those larger diameter tires have a similar effect as gearing up on your pinion gear. So if you wanna use larger diameter tires, you probably are gonna to have to compensate for that 
by gearing down on your pinion gear. The best and safest way to check your temps is just to get a temp gun. These are usually inexpensive, less than $50, and it's really dang convenient. You can also do it another way, but it's a little riskier. Essentially, after you've driven your car, you put your finger on the motor. If you can leave your finger on the motor for three seconds, you're within the safe temperature zone. If you put your finger on that motor and immediately it burns you, it's way too hot. Use that method at your own risk. Another major way you're destroying your RC car, or more specifically, the steering servo, is by not setting the endpoint adjustment, which basically limits the steering throw travel to match the mechanical throw of the car. If your servo is providing more throw than the car can provide, you're destroying that servo. Now with ready to run cars, the endpoint adjustments are usually already set, but it may be a good idea to double check it. If you have a ready to run car and you want to upgrade the servo, well then you're going to need to set those endpoints yourself after you install that servo. For RC kits that you build up from scratch, you definitely need to set that endpoints yourself. Now this is our more in-depth video on endpoint adjustments, we'll link to it down below. Check it out. Up next is a sure way to destroy your RC car, and that's by using it with a bound drivetrain, meaning your drivetrain has a lot of friction or resistance in it, and it's not rolling smoothly. And all that resistance is extra work for your motor and your speed control, adding stress and strain and more heat. But you can prevent this. Once in a while, it's a great idea to remove the motor or engine from your vehicle and give the drivetrain a spin. Does it roll freely or is it bound up? Sometimes the issue with the bound drivetrain has to do with just the gear mesh being way too tight. But if you've already taken out the motor at this point, you're not gonna be able to determine that. But, but other issues could be a seize ball bearing. You may have drivetrain parts that are worn out. Maybe the binding is coming from other drivetrain parts that are bent or broken inside. Maybe it's just coming from debris after you just drove in a field and you've got weeds and grass and just junk wrapped into your drivetrain. All of those things could be causing the issue. But whatever the case, the main point is, it's important to make sure your drivetrain always rolls friction free. Now, for you nitro guys out there, if you're letting fuel sit in your gas tank and your fuel lines, well then you're destroying your car. Because nitromethane does an excellent job at pulling moisture out of the air, and when it does, that moisture gets deposited into your engine, leading to corrosion and rust. After every use, you should dump out any remaining fuel in the fuel tank, and then fire up the car a few times to let the engine burn any remaining fuel out of the fuel lines. You can even add a few drops of a product called after-run oil, and that will give you the ultimate protection against moisture. Now we have two other ways you nitro guys are destroying your RC car. One, using dirty air filters is a quick way to get dirt and grime inside your carburetor and inside the engine. Use a fresh and clean air filter every time you drive. Two, using ripped exhaust gaskets is gonna provide a terrible tune on your engine. Those gaskets need to be replaced regularly with fresh, brand new gaskets. Last but not least is the seventh way you're destroying your RC car, and it's by not giving it regular service maintenance. RC cars are just like real cars, or dirt bikes, or even a bicycle. They need to be maintained and serviced regularly. It could be after so many hours of use, maybe it's after a few months, maybe every quarter, whatever the case. If you aren't doing the following, you're slowly destroying your RC car. Regular servicing includes removing the motor and engine to ensure the drivetrain is smooth. Remove the tires and ensure they aren't coming unglued. If they are, add CA glue to fix those spots. Disconnect the steering linkage from the servo to free up the steering assembly. Now check to ensure the steering assembly moves freely. If it's bound, it needs attention. If it's not, reattach the linkage to the servo. Now remove the shocks from the vehicle and lift the suspension arms up and down to ensure they move freely under their own weight. If they do not, they are bound up and they need attention. We made an entire video on suspension binding and we'll link to it down below. Next, with the shocks loose, give them a feel. Does it feel like they need oil? Because this would be a good time to top them up. And then when you're done with the shocks, you can reinstall everything you took off back onto the car and then give it a final shakedown. Go through the screws, make sure they're not backing out and they're still tight. And the nuts too, that they're not backing out and they're tight. The wheel nuts always, you know, give those a final good turn. And once you put the motor or engine back in, give that gear mesh a good feel to ensure it's nice and smooth 
and not bound up. Now the final thing to examine are the differentials. Over time, the differential fluid inside breaks down because of heat and needs to be refilled. Differentials that lack the fluid, they spin really easily, too easily. Differentials with a proper amount of diff fluid inside have some resistance to them, and that's how you want the diffs. So as the vehicle owner, it's just something you're gonna have to pay attention to, get a feel for, maybe once a year, get in there, open your diffs, inspect them, and top them up if needed. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and stop destroying your RC car. Instead, enjoy it for years to come. Guys, check out everything we talked about with our links down below, or check out these videos for more RC.